Now, this is a feature that not many people know about inside the Google Workspace ecosystem, and it's called Delegated Mail. Now, I've got a number of other videos on how to set this up, but I'm gonna show you very quickly how to make sure it's switched on for your domain, and then how to set it up yourself. I want one email to go to several emails. Okay, this is a great question. Love this one. The easiest way to have one email address filter into several emails or several mailboxes is to use something called a distribution group. And we set that up in our Google Workspace admin panel. Before I jump into the technical side of things, I wanna draw it out for you so you get an idea of how it looks and how it impacts your licensing as well, because most people have questions around how the licensing and the costs work when they wanna set up group-based email addresses. Now, let's imagine we have an email domain and we have a number of mailboxes. So let's say I have Peter here and I have a second email with Bob there. But I wanna create a distribution group. And that distribution group is created when I have a central email address and that email address needs to be automatically sent out to multiple people. So how do we do that? Let's say, for example, I want sales at to automatically go to Peter and go to Bob as well. Now, if we use the distribution group method, it's automatically gonna place a copy of that email in Peter's mailbox and a copy of that email in Bob's mailbox. And setting up a distribution group inside of Gmail is pretty straightforward. We're gonna go to our admin panel we're gonna to go to the groups service, so directory and then groups. And then from there, we're going to create a new group. I'm gonna call it test and I'll call it sales because that's what this person wanted to call it. And I'll click next. You can see here that there's a number of different options for how we select this group. And from here, we can choose who is gonna be able to send emails to this group. Now, by default, it's set to public. And effectively, when you set it to public, what that means is anyone in the world can access and send messages to this group. And so public means this is gonna be exposed to the world and anyone can send an email to that email address and that's gonna land in those mailboxes that you've defined. Now, that may be what you want. Keep in mind that this can introduce a risk. And the risk is that spammers are usually sending emails to the most common email addresses that people use publicly. Sales at your company.com, info at your company.com. So you're introducing risk. And when you expose an email address to the world, it means that pretty much anyone can send an email to that email address. Now, Google spam filters are pretty darn good. And they're gonna be able to filter most of the spam email out of anyone just randomly shooting off messages to random email addresses, but it's not perfect. So just keep in mind that if you wanna make this a public email address, be mindful that people are gonna try and spam it. But that said, if you only need to use this internally, Google also has an option for that. So you'll see here in the group options, I may choose to untick the external box under who can contact group owners. I may also choose who can post to leave that unticked from external as well. Now, what that means is nobody has access to this from the outside world. If I do want to expose this publicly, well, I want to tick the external users can post and external users can contract group owners as well. We probably wouldn't want to tick this box who can view conversations because that would effectively make the whole list of all of the messages, including potential sensitive information, public to the world. So we wanna make sure that that one is kept private. But if we're using this as an email-based distribution group, these settings will allow you to share it with the right people inside your organization. Now, what about when it comes to licensing? That's the next question that we usually get. Well, in your Google Apps account, you're gonna to need to pay for each one of your mailboxes. And I call them buckets of email. Now, each one of those mailboxes is gonna cost on a per user basis, but when you set up a distribution group, there's no cost there. There's no cost for a distribution group. So if you're interested in setting up one email address that goes to multiple users, well, you don't have to pay for that. But this is the simplest way to implement it. There is a second solution or a second option. And that option is to set up a shared mailbox or a delegated mailbox. Now, when you configure a delegated mailbox, it looks a little bit different. Let's say we still have Peter and Bob. Let's move them over here and let's draw this one again. So with a delegated mailbox, we have Peter, 
we have Bob, and we create a sales mailbox, but we actually this time pay for a license. And with a sales mailbox, we set it up just like any other user. And what we'll do is we delegate access from the sales mailbox to Peter and from the sales mailbox to Bob. And what that effectively lets us do is to allow them to access that mailbox securely without having to necessarily know the password. Now, this is a feature that not many people know about inside the Google Workspace ecosystem, and it's called delegated mail. Now, I've got a number of other videos on how to set this up, but I'm gonna show you very quickly how to make sure it's switched on for your domain and then how to set it up yourself. So number one, we wanna go into our admin panel. And inside our admin panel, the easiest way to find this is to search for the word delegate and go to the Gmail settings and find the delegation settings inside of Gmail. Now you can see here that I've chosen to allow users to delegate their mailboxes. And what that means is they can share their mailbox with somebody else. Now, how the method works is we first sign in as if we're the new sales mailbox and we share access to our mailbox back to Peter and access to our mailbox back to Bob. And this is what it looks like inside the sales mailbox. So I'm gonna use my mailbox as an example, but you would follow this on the sales mailbox. So I go to my main Gmail settings here. Inside of my Gmail, I click the settings wheel and then see all settings and then accounts. And from here, you can see the option to grant access to your account. And that's where I will share access from my account to someone else. But in this case, we're gonna be sharing from the sales mailbox to Peter and from the sales mailbox to Bob. And when it's all said and done, now imagine that I'm back in Peter's mailbox, because I am. If I wanna access the sales mailbox, I just need to go up here in the top right-hand corner. And you'll see here, there's accounts that I have the password for that I'm actually signed into, but there's also accounts that I've been delegated. And I don't need to know the password to those accounts because they automatically show up. And if I choose to open one of those accounts, I can open the account and it will automatically open in a new tab without me needing to sign in. Now, that's the magic of delegated mailboxes and there's different reasons why you would choose each and I've covered those in other videos that you'll find on our channel. If you search for shared mailbox, you'll find the different strategies and reasons why you might choose to use a delegated mailbox versus choosing to use a Google group service otherwise known as a distribution list. Hopefully that one has answered that question for you. Look forward to the next one. If you need more help with what we've covered in this video, IT Genius provides support services to businesses all over the world with problems just like this. Click the link below to get started.